Hi, welcome to Sylvia's Technique Vlog. In this section, I'm going to be talking about a southpaw clinch entry that was taught to me by Karahat. So, the way that you get into clinch can end up being really repetitive and only one thing all the time. So, finding other ways to get into the clinch can be really advantageous for yourself. And this one's interesting because basically you start from one guard, and as you're coming in, you switch guards and then land into your clinch entry as you come in. So basically you're gonna be coming in your normal way. You bring your guard up or you fake a knee, so it comes like this, and then as you come down, you're grabbing as you come down around the neck, and then this hand is gonna to come to control the opposite arm. Um, you wanna make sure that it's coming down as this catch all at once. You don't want to be like grabbing while you're here and then kind of finding your way in. You want it to be a like collapsing into the position. So keep your guard really high and then here and then you can control that arm. Um, as a clincher, uh, it's something that I think even for me who focuses a lot on clinch and thinks a lot about clinch, um, clinch entry is not something that people naturally uh, do a variety of things for. So generally, we end up coming in the same way over and over again. This can be partly because we have the same clinching partners in our gym, and so we kind of just all do the same things over and over again as we start. And we separate clinch from sparring in general. So when you're coming into clinch, when you're clinching, is, is just this kind of like, okay, now we're clinching, now we're starting, now we're doing this, but that's not how you end up clinching in an actual fight. You go from striking and finding your way in to catching someone. So thinking about how you get into clinch will put you at a greater advantage of your training matching your fighting because we don't separate uh, striking and clinching in an actual fight. It all just kind of flows together. Um, it's also difficult because a lot of people don't have any clinch entries. <laughs> so uh, going from a strike into the clinch is something that uh, people not only don't think about but don't have practice in because we don't really strike each other while we're clinch training. So what I like about this one is that as you're coming in, by either faking the knee or changing your guard or whatever your thing is, that movement flows very naturally from striking and also is in response to your opponent striking. So it assumes a transition from very regular fighting into the clinch. Um, what this looks like uh, more closely is that, again, this is from southpaw. So this leg ends up as like a block a lot. So it kind of hides my clinch entry because I use this forward block for many other things in my actual uh, striking. But as it comes forward and my opponent's staying right there, you have to be close enough, but as you come down, you grab as you land. So it's up, down, and then you're controlling, you're controlling their other arm with this arm. So you end up having like a pretty good control on both sides. A secondary part of this that Karahat, when he taught it to me, showed me was how he lands with this front leg. And it's a little bit tricky because if you don't do it right, you end up turning yourself kind of sideways. So you have to really think about why when he comes forward, he like bends his knee this way, kind of across. He lands kind of across someone's stance and comes around this way. One of the reasons he changed my stance is because from orthodox, when I would grab, I end up overturning. So I grab around someone's neck and then my body's sideways and I have no power from this position, which is why he changed me here so that my dominant hand is at the front to be able to start grabbing people. So I've been practicing grabbing from southpaw with my right hand. So this is a second thing that interesting because I came from orthodox. This feels very natural to me because I always grabbed with my left hand prior to this. But the stepping across of the stance, I can show it on this long bag a little bit. 
So if you picture an opponent whose stance is similar to my stance, so you have a foot here and a foot here. When you come across, you land here with your knee kind of poking into the front leg of your opponent. So if I'm orthodox and someone comes in with their leg and bends in the way that I just showed, their knee is actually pinning this leg on me. So I'm gonna be caught here, caught here, and the leg is kind of pinned. So I end up kind of in this position, which is there's not a whole lot I can do off of that. So you come in and you stand close to their foot with the knee coming into the inside of the thigh. That's advanced, don't do that first. <laughs> like start working on that with a person to feel how you can kind of interrupt their legs as you're doing that. Um, when you're first starting to do this, the main thing you wanna be practicing is landing into that catch. So as you come in, you can't be like catching wide. You need to have control of your entire frame. So as you're coming in, you wanna keep everything nice and guarded. So you want your guard to be up as you come in. And for me, something I've been trying to add to this is this arm really, really protecting as I come in. So it's almost like a Sagat's caged elbow to come in this way. So as I'm coming in, that's up. And then here I'm changing guard, down, and then you control the arm. So you can see that there are a number of different pieces to this move that can be added or taken away given uh, what works for you, what feels good, and uh, what you're training. If you see other elements that help you in this movement, add them and like think about them.